Hello Internet and welcome back to the Roundup, a bite-sized and bent look at E3 2011. Once again, I'm Trevor for BentThePodcast.com. I'm going to be taking you through a well-chewed and slightly digested version of the events of June 7th, 2011 from the E3 show floor. And hopefully that's going to end up being less disgusting than it sounds. Today saw a bunch of game debuts, and more importantly, the last of the big three press conferences. Nintendo finally took the lid off Project Cafe, which is now called Wii U, and proved once and for all that their corporate policy is to confuse and annoy gamers with increasing levels of malice with each successive console generation. Wii U's Nintendo's first real competitor to the Xbox and PS3, supporting 1080p HD video out and supporting an IBM multi-core processor and AMD graphics. Also announced are onboard flash storage and a new high-density proprietary disc format to carry the new games. Nintendo has a ton of third-party partners on board to develop games for the new console, which really is something that gamers have been clamoring for since the GameCube days. Of course, this being Nintendo, the big news is, of course, the innovative controller, a dual analog motion controlled monstrosity with a 6.2 inch touchscreen as well as a front facing camera and microphone. Wii U allows you to stream content wirelessly to the controller, so even if someone else is using the TV, you can still play your games on the controller like a handheld. Further, it lets you get different and unique views on the controller that you wouldn't otherwise get on the TV screen, opening up new gameplay possibilities and really new ways to game, as Nintendo does from time to time. The console will also support the Wiimote, the classic controller, and the Wii balance board, but no backwards compatibility with uh, GameCube peripherals or games. So all those GameCube controllers that everybody's been using for Smash Bros, you're out of luck. Finally, I was saying this yesterday and it's finally happening, I'm getting some new original titles. Uh, right off the bat is Rashard, which is an Xbox Live Arcade PlayStation Network title, a comedic side-scrolling physics platformer starring a miner equipped with a Half-Life style gravity gun. It does seem to be aping Valve games a lot, boring really heavily from the Team Fortress 2 visual style, as well as the Half-Life 2 physics puzzling kind of gameplay, but it looks like a good romp nonetheless. Also, the awkwardly named PC and PSN title Payday the Heist is jumping on the copy Valve stuff as much as you possibly can bandwagon by taking Left 4 Dead gameplay and transplanting it into a sort of Ocean's Eleven style heist story. Um, there's going to be six campaigns which you can play until you would prefer to gouge your eyes out with a rusty spoon rather than ever play one of those six games again. Uh, but, as Left 4 Dead proved on the consoles, that's what DLC is for. Okay, let's take a second and just ignore the giant freaking elephant in the room and talk about Final Fantasy XIII 2. Beyond the fact that this numbering of numbered games is ridiculous, Final Fantasy XIII does not necessarily lend itself that well to a sequel. Final Fantasy XIII was this abysmally written dull slog of a game that was trying to be as non-interactive as possible, and now it's getting sequelized. Uh, based on the trailer, this game looks like it'll deliver just as much grinding boredom as the first game with an even more peculiar, poorly told pseudo-linear storyline. Now, the biggest bad today was really, really the Wii U. Not only does the name suck, which uh, really is starting to become a trend with E3 this year, but the console itself looks like the mishmash bastard love child of the Wii and the launch version of the Xbox 360. Add to that there are going to be two main ways to control this, namely the Wiimote, well three, Wiimote, Wiimote Nunchuck, and now the new controller, as it's being referred to. Um, I'm starting to see a bit of uh, consumer confusion already on message boards and things about this. Uh, and the idea that there's only ever going to be one new controller at play rather than multiple tells me that Nintendo really hasn't worked out the gremlins with this console and maybe they've just uh, had something in E3 just to dispel the rumors more than anything else. Now, this controller 
really is massive and it seems to be targeted towards more casual gaming demographic rather than hardcore gamers but the hardcore gamers are getting one of the things that we asked for which is dual analogs wait what really i'm sorry i'm informed that uh, e3.nintendo.com refers to these analog sticks as circle pads which means that they are less like the analog sticks on the hardcore gaming consoles like the xbox and the playstation and more like the slidey little nipple pads on the ds and the psb so uh is there anything else that we thought that was happening that just isn't happening uh-huh the games all right let's take a look at that game partner video once again these are just cool looking gamer style games by third party developers supporting Wii U. They are not necessarily Wii U games. In fact, there have really only been a couple of vague mini game Wii me styled uh, tech demos that we've seen for the Wii U so far. So, this really impressive, really gamer looking video that they put together really does not showcase any of the games that are coming out for the Wii U. In fact, these are largely PC, Xbox, and PS3 games that are going to be coming out in 2011 rather than things that are going to be on the Wii U even at launch in 2012. <clears throat> now, one of the things that we have seen about the Wii U that is kind of encouraging is this real-time tech demo that they did. Uh, it's showcasing some nice depth of field, real-time lighting, some nice texturing, physics particle effects, but really this is all stuff that we've been seeing on PC for years and Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 for the last couple of years. Not really that impressed. All in all, this is an interesting piece of tech, but it's still going to be targeted largely towards a casual gaming audience. And the 6.2 inch touchscreen on the controller the way it's been showcased thus far, really that is what we're looking at, is casual gaming. So once again, Nintendo has sort of thrown a bone to the hardcore gamers, especially since they said that there's going to be a new Smash Bros game even though they haven't started it or figured out who's developing it yet. But probably not what gamers have really been asking for for the last few years. Now there was a question asked during the press conference, what does the U actually stand for? Reggie said uh, that it stood for, to quote him, Unique, unifying, utopian, right? All these word associations. How about unfinished or underwhelming? Or you, once again, did not listen to your core gaming audience. Sorry, man. Take your Fisher Price controller and the rest of your toys and go home. Okay. I'm going to keep this brief. Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Originally demoed with the pseudo-realistic style that we saw in Zelda Twilight Princess is now just kind of a cell shaded heap of primary and pastel colors. And Link looks somehow even dumber than usual in the first part of the game before he come, becomes the hero and now they're also ripping off Avatar. What is one of the enemies a big blue cat? Is this is this the way we're going now? The design for Zelda games has been seriously flirting with total freaking bananas for a while now, but they've just driven straight off the edge of the cliff into crazy. I don't like it. It's ugly. Move on. So as you've probably gotten from this, there's been a lot of disappointment for me with Day 2 of E3. Uh, day 2 E3, Manchester United 4. Uh, Wii U is a total joke at the moment, but I know that sales figures are going to prove me wrong on this one. Because Nintendo always does this. They premiere a console, gamers say it's stupid, and then the entire goddamn world buys it. Now, with a little bit of luck, this console is going to have the third-party developer support that the GameCube and the Wii never had, so gamers are actually going to have something to play on it after launch and after Mario, Mario Kart, Smash Bros, Zelda, and Metroid have all gotten their obligatory stage time out of the way. But all that said, um, just keep seeing the games that are premiered, because that's really what it's about, right? It's about the games. 
All right, that's it for the roundup. Once again, I'm Trevor for BentThePodcast.com. Go check out the site. It's been right. Go check out the site. There's tons of stuff there. There's articles. There's going to be a week and roundup podcast there uh, that I'm sure that Kevin and I are both taking notes for all week. And you guys have yourself an excellent rest of your day.